All right, taking a look at materials on this particular project, I'd like for the materials to be more realistic materials, but I don't want to spend a lot of time on like uh, UV mapping or trying to fit materials uh, on the outside of like these solid bodies. All right, so what I'm going to suggest for this particular project, if you were to hit M on your keyboard, actually, let me just take over. I'm, just, I'm going to I'm going to blast through this content. You guys can go back and do it on your own a little bit. If you were to hit M on your keyboard, that's going to open up our material editor. All right. There are really two options for the material editor and what it looks like. We have the old school compact material editor. This was like kind of how we used to work prior to, I'd say like 3ds max, like 2020. Then all of a sudden they switched over to this slate editor. It's a little bit bigger and uh, I think more practical it kind of just shows you everything it's like a big palette of you know like all your different materials okay um, we've been working with it a little bit just enough to be dangerous the main uh, type of material I've been asking you to make was a multi sub material that was the one where we were doing like paint by number stuff okay so we have like ones and twos uh, I don't know that I have threes used someplace but apparently I do oh yeah we have an extra material on the outside so basically I have like my materials designated as like two different types, but I feed them through this multi-sub object and that's what's applied to the chessboard. It gives me a good opportunity to set up really just like two primary materials. So I have like reds that I'm using. I'm using just red explicitly for all of the chess pieces and then for those boxes on the chessboard. All right, and then down here we're using, it looks like a dark gray material uh, for the remainder of the pieces. All right, so most of you probably have something like that set up. So you can feed the multi-sub object onto the chessboard, all right, but you can then use explicitly just the material by itself for individual pieces, all right, whether they be on one side of the board or the other, all right? Now, what I did for my materials was I actually tried to mimic like a ceramic type of material, all right, so it has like the shininess and uh, some other properties that you would see with like a ceramic type material in real life. All right, we have a bunch of different options of like real life materials. I'm going to show you a couple different options that you have to work with, but it basically just gets um, gets the material really close to what you would see, even if eventually like you'd like to put a pattern on it or like another uh, image or something. It gets the material to look similar to what it would be again in real life. Okay, so here's what we're going to do. Uh, for the for the material, even if you destroy or break up the relationship between like the spot or the node on the multi sub object, all right, you can always hook that back up. So if you want to get rid of that or disconnect it, all right, you can just delete a material. So you can grab its header and you can just like delete the name for it, all right. As of right now, like in the scene, it's looking like it's updating that, and I have no material on. But if I were to build some new materials, I can go ahead and I can kind of like set that back up. So what I'm going to have you guys do is you're just going to use these physical materials, all right? So I grab the swatch from over here on the left for a physical material, or if you want to, you can just right click and go materials. We're going to go down to uh, just general and then physical material. Physical materials do work with Arnold Render, all right? And then we can kind of feed these back into the swatch. And what I'm going to have you do is just set up some properties for that physical material so that they can look a little bit closer to what you might see in real life. So we have some different options for physical materials. All right, you can go over to uh, like this little finishes preset and you can set it up so that it's either like glossy paint, satin paint, matte finish. So it's not gonna like really reflect anything. Varnish paint is gonna have a huge like shine on the outside of it. All right, we have like some different like wood type materials if it was satin or if it was glossy. You got some concrete and some ceramic materials. You got plastic, masonry, rubber. There's glass materials. If you were to use glass, I gotta warn you, it's gonna take a really, really long time to render because the glass material is gonna have to calculate in like light bounces and stuff like that, right? So it's gonna take a really long time. We also have some metal materials, and the metal materials might take a little bit longer, but not nearly as long as like glass. Let's try like one of the one of the metal materials for just a second. I'm gonna go to like a map. Um, Aluminum for one one of my uh, sides here. All right, so I'm just gonna feed that into the number one slot. We'll go down here, we'll go materials, physical material. For this other one, we'll make this like a two 
Let's make this like another type of metal. Let's see if I go like a copper or something like that. It might be a little too close together, but let's see what we got. Yeah, that's cool. All right, so I have two like different metal materials. And then I think like maybe just for the outline or for the border, we could do, we'll do like the copper also. Yeah, that's fine. All right, for the camera, all right, I think you should get in the habit of using a camera. You should try to avoid just rendering something from a perspective view. The benefit of having a camera is you can leave a camera set up and then you can still navigate around your scene. All right, so all I'm doing is I'm pressing C on my keyboard to go back to the camera view. But by having a camera view, you can be very deliberate about like where you're placing a camera for a shot. If you had, or you were trying to give the illusion of maybe two players playing, you might set up two different cameras in your scene and then switch back and forth between those two cameras as like the scene was going on. All right, that's not a bad idea. To set up cameras, it's just right under the Create tab. You have the little camera tool. I recommend using target cameras because they're uh, a little bit easier as far as like the setup goes. You can deliberately pick a starting point and then point, put a point on where you want it to move to. If you were to go to the camera view, all right, you simply set the camera view up kind of the same way that you do uh, any other view. All right, so if you want to turn on shading and you want it to be in like high quality so you can kind of see what it's going to look like, then we simply click on like our little walkthrough mode here. All right, and you can pan the camera. You can click on the little person down here. You can like point it at something. You can use the WASD keys to set up your shot. All right. And it looks like right now I never put the materials back on uh, all of these guys. Let's just do that really quick. All right. So we got relatively real life materials set up. We got our cameras in the scene so we can bounce back and forth between the two cameras that we're utilizing. Um, <laughs> last up. Materials, camera, oh, lights. Okay, lights. So if we go to um, like a perspective view here, I have two lights in my scene. All right, and I'm looking for like a really simple lighting situation. I don't know, I don't need you to create some like monstrous lighting situation. I think less is more. All right, so here's what I'm going to have you guys do. You're going to go into uh, like a 3D view, and if you're in like a high quality or a performance mode, it'll allow you to see like kind of what the lighting solution is going to look like. One thing you have to turn on though. All right, if you click on like you know the um, uh, if you click on the little view tab here so we can actually like see what's going on, um, you got to click on lights or lighting and shadows and come down here to where it says illuminate with scene lights. All right, and then we want to turn on shadows and we want to have progressive skylight and we want to have ambient occlusion turned on. So keep all those on there. Okay, and what we're going to do is we're going to go to the create tab. And you have this little light tool where you can put a couple of different lights in. Be really careful and deliberate about where you place lights, okay? First of all, I wanna just show you the target light. So a target light works almost like, uh, like a spotlight, okay? So you can click on target light and you can click and drag it same way that you put a camera in and target something, okay? So if I were to put that target in there or put that target light in there, all of a sudden, since I'm in high quality mode with lighting turned on in the scene, and like shadows uh, and those other settings applied, we should see an updated view of what's, what this scene's gonna look like with that specific light in it, all right? So as I move the light around, you get an opportunity to kind of see how it's gonna affect all the objects in your scene, okay? So the computer's doing a whole bunch of math right here and it's trying to kind of calculate that out so it'll show it to you, all right? As of right now, like if I put that light straight up over top and you got to look at this from a bunch of different angles but if I put that light like straight over top of my chest set and I got some metallic pieces there's gonna be a lot of like you know light bouncing off of those pieces um, this is what it's gonna look like okay and with shadows if we were to render that really quick 
All right, see how sharp the shadows look based on where that light is placed? All right, so you can see a big difference between the surfaces that are getting hit by light and the surfaces that are still in a shadow. My computer fan just kicked on. There's a lot of work being done on the computer side of things right now, okay? To fill in some of the darkness of those shadows, what I want to do is I want to create a free light on the opposite side of the scene. All right, and that free light, I don't want to create shadows. I just want that to be like a little bit of ambient light. All right, so what I want to try to do is I want to try to maybe turn down some of the brightness of the lights so they're not like absolutely pounding on one section of the chessboard. All right, I'm getting like a lot of light here. It's almost burnt out in one spot and then there's nothing else going on in some other regions. So we want to you know, kind of like decrease the value or the brightness of this light. You can do that a bunch of different ways. You can do it by moving it away from the chest set, all right, with that one free light that you put in. You could do that by going to its properties and looking at some of the properties that are in here, all right. We can actually turn off shadows. I don't want the free light to create shadows. And then we can turn down its intensity, okay. So you can kind of turn down that free light a little bit. So when you render that, the target spotlight is creating most of the light in the scene. The free light acts kind of like a fill light and it starts to kind of like lighten up some of the darker shadows and things like that and make the scene look a little bit more realistic. All right, just adds a little bit of depth to some of your, uh, your uh, chess pieces. All right, and then the other thing I want you to think about is based on where you're putting the cameras in your specific scene, where the lights are going to come from. Okay, so like how often do you take a picture of somebody, you know, you're trying to capture a good image of somebody's face and it seems like illuminated from behind them so that the person's face is in a shadow. That's bad practice, right? You're take, trying to take a picture, capture what you look like and the light's behind you. Usually you want the light like on your face, all right? You don't want too much light. You don't want to get like, burned out, you don't want to be in the shadow, but you want just the right amount. All right, so consider when you're placing those two lights in the scene, like where they're coming from. All right, so we should have some shadows in the scene, I want to have some shadows in the scene, all right, but based on where my cameras are, if my cameras are kind of on this side, maybe I'll put the free light on the back side of the scene, and I'll put the target light kind of over on this side, and if it's too bright, or I'm getting too many shadows, I still may end up moving that away. Um, I'm just going to turn on a little filter tool. We'll put this in the middle. Let's move this up just a little bit. I'm almost done with the demo, so just be patient here. All right, we'll put that fill light back here. We got the camera. Camera set up on one side. Let's go to our camera real quick. That's a little bit better, so my shadows are kind of on the back side. I can see most of the surfaces of my pieces. So we get like a little bit of depth going on. It looks like a pretty good chess set right there. All right, so I got like some metallic pieces. I got like just a gray background. I think for the project, I think we're meeting most of the goals. Relatively realistic looking materials. The scene looks pretty good. The only thing that I'm doing, like maybe different from any other protocols that we've used so far. All right, when I go to render, the one change in here is I'm using this thing called the Arnold Renderer. Okay, so uh, Arnold Renderer will work with those physical materials. It'll work with any kind of camera, both physical cameras, which I have one physical camera set up, and then the regular standard camera, which I instructed you guys to use. All right, all of the other settings, if you're going to render anything out, make sure you just set up your time output, your frame range. That's something that we did last project. Uh, you can play around a little bit if you have time with your resolution. If you have time, if you have a good animation set up and it's ready to go and you have a couple days to work on it, yeah, crank up the output size. Crank up the resolution a little bit. This is like a 4K resolution right here. I think. Pretty sure. Pretty sure it is. I'll have to check that. Uh, but it's really high resolution. All right? If you don't have as much time, maybe bring it down a little bit. Okay? And then lastly, like, don't forget to set your render output. All of those things are described up on Classroom, all right? Uh, it was a little while ago because it was the last project, but I did have that one post up. I think it was as material here, render settings, all right? All that stuff is described for you. 
okay? Please go back and look at that. Don't be lazy and just like raise your hand because you forgot and oh, I don't, I don't remember. Go back and look. All right, it's on there for you. That's material I expect you guys to kind of look, look to, okay? That's it. Get some work done. You got the rest of this week to finish modeling um, and planning what the animation's gonna be. Next week, I want you animating and rendering, okay? Get going, please.